more lunch break. Jen, Jen was hovering way up here that yeah, time. Yeah, I don't want those. She's on hover hands. She's eating with her hands today. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Lunch Break. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a domain or an online store, do it with Squarespace. Yeah. Our website's made with Squarespace. Have you been to our website? You can find our podcast there. We're eating Viet food today. Yeah. Food of my people. Mm. Mm. Nam Nam. It looks delish. Nam San. We thought it'd be a fun episode if we kind of hopped on the old bandwagon. <laughs> Uh, we are reading your assumptions about Wang Fu. Yeah, and uh, just for context, we made a post on IG asking our followers for assumptions about us. People were like, oh, I assumed you guys weren't on a social media post. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right, let's jump in. I want to know. I'm like, I'm dying okay. to know. One of the hardest things about shooting lunch break is deciding what to eat. I, I, I say no, it's not. That's not the hardest part. It, mm. is, it is something that takes up a lot of time. I think it's the hardest part in general, deciding what to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. the hardest to decide who's gonna put their foot down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And decide what to eat. No, yeah. and what happens is someone says, okay, you decide, you put the foot down, they decide, and everyone goes, oh. Yeah, that happens all the time. Because we used to like order from the same place every day, and then we were just getting tired of the same kind of food, so. But now, you know, we're trying to limit that you know, making our own lunch. So it's a little bit easier to decide these days. Right. Yeah. Another assumption. You guys know all the famous Asians. <laughs> it's also the most asked assumption. I could see where this is coming from. You watch like a lot of our videos. You see Asian Bachelor or at two. Yeah. You see like Yonzi Kim, Randall Park showing mm -hmm. up. You see Shib Sibs on their channel yeah. a lot. I would say yeah, it's true. That's true. Not like, all of them. But a majority. We don't know all of them, but we are related to all of them. <laughs> This is also just a stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> but there, no, there definitely are Asians that we don't know. Chai and Fat, I don't know him. That's true. Personally. Jackie Chan, I don't yeah. know BTS. We, we do try to make it a point to like make a list of like the up and coming talent that we see like on these Netflix movies where we're like, mm -hmm. oh, like that's a name that we kind of want to keep an eye on. And, and support, yeah, like yeah. we came from a YouTube generation or, or era mm -hmm. where, yeah, we met people, other channels, and it was just all love, all collaboration. Like, mm -hmm. let's just like, it was exciting and now, mm -hmm it's becoming a little bit more Hollywood where people are like, oh yeah, hey, nice to meet you. And then like, oh, we'll talk never. Or, yeah. or it's like, oh, we'll talk when you have a project that you know, I'm interested in. And I'm like, man, why can't we just like be friends, you know, yeah. like and just support each other? Yeah. Everyone is always full of energy and the office is never quiet. That days Wait, at the who said this? That is this one of us? Every workday is fun. It's an awesome, perfect place to work at. <laughs> Utopia of an office. Wong Futopia. You know, I, yeah, that's true. What? <laughs> no. Do we work at the no. same place? It's not full of energy and we're not always talking. It's actually majority of the it's time. It's probably 90% quiet. 90% it's actually silent. <laughs> There's a lot of um, editing going on yeah. and like post work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are just zoned in into like- On their what, computers. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 This is the first time we talked today. Like we, yeah. we've been working for multiple hours. I literally walked in, I didn't talk to anyone and I sat down and that's when we started talking. Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that revealing too much? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Phil just comes in and he just sits down and waits to be instructed. <laughs> Phil, it's time for lunch break now. I feel like sometimes the silence is broken when like someone else peers over and like, oh, they're watching a new video or like new trailer and mm. then everyone's like comes together. You, you, you hear like and a giggle? Or it like suddenly a... becomes like a huge discussion out of nowhere. Like, yeah. It's almost, everyone wants to talk and interact. But <laughs> everyone needs that little catalyst, you know? Yeah. But sometimes people are like in the zone and you don't, you don't want to bother people. And like, I know like we, we, we want to give them the time and the mental space to like just focus. But that's exactly the reason why lunch break was made in the first place. Because like there was so much just silence in the office. And then it got to a point to where you guys were like, let's eat together, right? And then that just kind of became oh, no, no, no. It was, it was It was, we noticed that we talked the most during our lunch break. Mm. And that we have a lot of the things to talk about. Yeah. yeah. But wrong again. Ha <laughs> ha. Another assumption. You never get into arguments and are just one big happy family. Mm. The Wong Fu fam. I feel like that person asking that is knows that that's not they're true. Trying, they're trying to start something. Yeah. Oh, many people. Well, it's kind of like, I don't think anyone, like, we're family. We are family. They want to know if we're not family. And family. like families with siblings, we have uh, quarrels and we have serious talks here and there. Yeah, because we're still co-workers at the end of the day and we have to like work together and... I don't want to say arguments, but most of our serious discussions mm -hmm. come from the fact that ultimately we do really actually care about 
the company. We also do care about each other. And I think that's when people argue the most is when you actually care about someone mm -hmm. and how they either think of you or how they're treating you. Mm -hmm. But like, people probably want to know, do we hang out outside of work? <laughs> you guys just want to watch movies we, all the time. We, have, we still have different interests and other friends outside of work too. I don't have many other friends outside and of work. And Phil has a second job, <laughs> so that's well, another thing. But I want to hang out with you guys outside. I think we, you guys don't want to hang out with me. We happen to go to events together. I haven't seen any of you guys in any weekend in the past like two months. You know, I play basketball. Why don't you invite me to that, you know, when you were shooting around the other day? Huh? You're, you're I so, saw that. You're so far. That's the only, that's the problem. <laughs> we see each other's stories and we're like, oh, TFTI. Cool. Oh, Taylor, you were out on Saturday night wearing a, a funny NASA thing. Who was you? I, I, was I texted you. Whatever, you literally, he no, called. Cool, he cool. ended it too. That's no, cool, man. It's cool. Next question. And we had tickets. It was a ticketed event. So Great. It was totally cool. Well, maybe you can ask me if I want to buy a ticket next time. I thought it was. Um, yeah. Um. This is what we're, this now. We're, now we're arguing. Great. You guys yeah. don't really watch YouTube anymore, so this part of the job. They don't, since they didn't know what this trend we, was. Oh, we watch different parts of YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube is a very large, large platform. But I, I feel like I always point out that you guys don't know like yeah. certain yeah. YouTubers. Trendy They're really YouTube. big. I don't watch YouTubers anymore. Yes. YouTubers. Yeah. Oh, YouTube. So there's like a difference. Consistent content. I, I um I can't keep up. I watch like old people YouTube now. I watch like CNBC's, MSNBC's. Oh, like, that's old. <laughs> So I do watch YouTube, it's just, I guess it's just not the trendy YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't really like all the kind of flashy, trendy stuff anyway, mm -hmm. but I do watch a lot of like tech reviews and yeah, random science type content. Cause like, I really like the Discovery Channel during like the Mythbusters phase. I do like that kind of content and I'm finding it again yeah. on YouTube. Right, right. Okay. I'd still only watch Asian YouTube of like Wong Fu, JK. Yeah. But see, there's no Asian YouTube anymore. I would say that Asian YouTube is gone. There is no Asian mm -hmm. YouTube anymore. Jen, did your taste change? I know that you're still pretty involved, by the most involved. I thought, yeah, I, I thought like you I... said you changed. You said you stopped watching certain people. Yeah, Wong Fu. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of family vlogs now. Oh my God, you're that's maturing. a huge, yeah. We're talking about old, old oh, people yeah. YouTube, that's older people even YouTube. Even on Instagram, I stopped following a lot of fashion people and like beauty people just because I feel like it just creates a certain mindset. Oh. Like when you're scrolling, you're like, oh, so, so pretty. Oh. Uh, but now I follow a lot of families too and babies. And I feel like that's the worst. new mindset. No, it's different because it's, it's all about like, it's very wholesome and like happy. It's about cute babies. I feel like it's just a different type of consuming these days. So you're right. Okay. You're right. You're right. You only depict Cali Asian Americans in your videos and not those from the Midwest or East. Well, I think that's true. It's probably true and it's probably because our voices from West Coast Asians. I will say though that a lot of the people actually in our videos are not necessarily from California. A lot of it, I feel like a lot of it is just backdrop and because of the setting of LA, mm -hmm. a lot of the characters are going to be kind of from that yeah. voice too. I think when Wang Fu first started, it's like, any Asians on, on a screen, cool. Mm -hmm. We're just so glad to see an Asian face. And now because we've all gotten accustomed to it, mm -hmm. which is a privilege and which is progress, now we're like, okay, now we can expect more. Now just to be Asian is not good enough. Now we need an East Coast Asian. Specific right. representation. Exactly, mm -hmm. right. I think it's a reflection of just like changing times too. Yeah. Like, oh wow, there's actually a large population growing in this area that feels like they need to be represented. Mm -hmm. That's actually interesting that you bring up because like, you know, back in, in the golden age or whatever, like Kev Jumbo was representing, you know, the Texas Asians. And then you mm -hmm. got, you had Ryan Higa from Hawaii. So like, there was a lot mm -hmm. more like spread out and then like people start to gravitate it's towards LA right. and then they go back out. Right. Like the Fung Bros, like they did their whole thing where they were in New York for a little bit. Right. So. There's a lot of Canadians now. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that assumption is true. We're not doing it like with an ill intent or something. Yeah, or like we're, we're cognizant of it too, yeah. You guys aren't a wealthy company and that everything you put out brings in just enough money. Well, other ones were like, y'all are rich. <laughs> I would say that that assumption is true. There's a reason why we have a Patreon, guys. <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll be honest. Like we have an office, we have equipment. We do have six people that are, you know, earning a living. So yes, Wong Fu does earn and generate a good amount of revenue. We put so much of it back into our productions and the company. The type of content we make is actually very expensive. We have to like pay crews and pay locations and pay actors. And so yeah, that affects our bottom line. So yeah, that's true. But it's worth it. There, there's the positive angle. But it's worth it. It's definitely worth it.
all of you guys are type B personality. What's, What's type, type B? A personality. Yeah. Type A is like super like, everything needs to be organized, like you have it like this one way oh. or no way. Type B is like chill, relax. I'm type B. I feel like I'm type B. Okay, Phil is very analytical. That's for sure, in a lot of I'm ways. I'm so laid back, look. I feel like no one wants to admit they're type A, because type A is always like a negative connotation. Is it? Fine, f You don't yeah, I'm like, type A. People I'm like, you're a. so type A. I would probably say type A. Yeah, I'm very like nitpicky yeah. about. Check his Google Sheets. Yeah, yeah. spreadsheets, <laughs> calendars. I think I'm type A in certain ways, mm -hmm. in certain contexts. I will analyze the situation of should I be type A or type B in this situation. So that's type A. Yeah, if you're analyzing you which type you should be, that's called type A. <laughs> no, but like if I know that there's a situation where I don't need to be so like, oh, why is not, why are things not perfect? I can take a back seat and I can be chill. Phil pretends to hold auditions so that he can cast himself as the lead. I've not been the lead in anything in almost a year. And we haven't made much since then. <laughs> I think people think I'm in a lot of stuff, but if you look at our entire catalog, I'm not in that much stuff. There's not like a lot of actors internally at Wong Fu, so Phil is like a very capable actor, you know? He just writes um, conveniently 30 year old Asian American male. I want them to act more. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I'm, I don't even think I'm that good. It takes practice, so you guys just need to practice more. You have to write me a role. Wait, Jen's been in hella stuff. What? It's always the back of my head. It's ridiculous. Taylor is a... Is an actor oh, already. A great actor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't write. Yeah. We, we, you don't write. Well, you write yourself in joy. Yeah, wait. I, Taylor writes himself more than I write myself. Are you kidding me? I haven't. What? I wrote all day after college. I think one one reason why it seems like I'm in lost stuff is because like I intro a lot of things, you know, or I'll do like the the so closing you're technically menu. Technically, in every video. Oh, you are. I Alana. lead. I lead it in. Yeah. yeah. And end it. <laughs> all right, fine. I get. It. I get the hint. I'm not going to be in anything else. All right, so that's all the time we have for your assumptions. We had a lot more. And once again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Our website is made with Squarespace and it's really pretty and it's really, really easy to use. It's an all-in-one platform. They got beautiful templates that you can uh, use and it makes it really easy for the design process. They have award-winning 24-7 customer service and they have really good marketing tools. Yeah, and if you need a domain or you want to transfer your existing domain, you can do that with Squarespace as well. Right, so just use our code WONGFU at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. And check out our store at wongfustore.com and get that, get that. She made all those designs. No. All right, see you guys next Thursday. Thursday. Bye. Woo! Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Yeah, we have an update for you. We are throwing a warehouse sale yes. this Saturday and Sunday. The 29th and 30th of June at Bopo Mofo Cafe in San Gabriel, California. Yeah, if you missed your chance to buy these classic tees back in the day, well now you can. Yes, if you didn't have a credit card back in high school but you got one now, clearance prices. Yeah, so come join us for a Wong, Wong Fu, Fu weekend, weekend at, at the, the warehouse, warehouse sale. sale. <laughs>